Hello and welcome. I'm Brian, Captain, Editor of The Banker. My guest here in New York is Ralph Hammers, the CEO of ING. Uh, Ralph, welcome. I mean, first of all, why are you in New York? Well, uh, good morning, Brian. Um, well, we're here in New York in order to celebrate our 20-year anniversary uh, at, uh, of our listing at the New York Stock Exchange. So we had some uh, celebrations yesterday, ringing the closing bell at the New York Stock Exchange, and we, we took quite some clients along with us because the clients are our reason of existence. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, look, you've had uh, some, some great years. Last year, profits were up mm -hmm. nearly 18%. Uh, but it's a very tough environment out there for banks in Europe. Is how, how is growth going to come going ahead? Well, for us, growth is, is coming from different angles. The first angle is the growth on the more the corporate banking side of things, the wholesale banking side of things. Um, we've been focusing on specific sectors, global sectors, and we have a global reach with, uh, with our activities in 40 countries. Uh, and as a consequence of that, we were not kind of really impacted by the lower growth in Euro per se, in Europe per se, uh, because we have a global reach and we're so spa sector uh, focused. So that's where a lot of the growth on the assets came from. Uh, on the other side, in Europe, we're still growing as well, and we're growing much faster than our competitors because we're taking market share. And that has everything to do with our model. We have a disruptive model uh, as a challenger in markets like Germany and Spain and Italy and Australia as well. Yeah. And, and you're the third, the third biggest retail bank in Germany, online, exactly. online only. Exactly. So uh, the story in, in, in Germany is remarkable, and it kind of shows that we're we're a fintech, a voladatra, as, uh, as I uh, call it. Uh, we started there 15 years ago from scratch, uh, more or less like a greenfield. Uh, we, we purchased a small bank to get the license. We built the bank around the internet rather than that we built the internet around the bank, right? So we, we made a business model out of the internet in itself. And we've been growing since to more than 8 million customers now. We still got 1,500 new customers in a day. And we haven't opened a single branch. All right, no but, but branch. I come back to my first point. I mean, it's still yeah. a very tough environment, isn't it? Sure. I mean, your, sure. your net interest margin is sort of about 1.52, uh, and interest rates are sort of flat. Yeah. So, you know, where are the growth opportunities? Yeah, that's a good question, really. Um, our focus has been, until a couple of years ago, in building a balance sheet, basically. You know, how do you get cheap savings in, and how, basically, do you make margin in... in, 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 in in, uh, on your lending side. Uh, but that model is being hurt by the low rate environment and by the basically the flat yield curve environment that we, that we see. Um, so over the last couple of years, we've been moving away from a model of savings in and, and lending it out, loaning it out uh, to a model where we're very much focused on the broader client relationship, the primary relationship as we call it. Uh, okay, now, now yeah. you make a lot yeah. about primary customers. Yes. So tell me how a primary customer is different from any other kind of customer. Well, the way we look at primary customers is that, uh, again, you know, let's just go back to, we started as a savings bank in most of these countries. Uh, we started to offer payments accounts as well, fully digital. Uh, through the payments accounts, we actually know our customers much better. We are in daily contact with our customers. If you do their salary accounts, they, they basically refer to you as their primary bank. And because they have a salary account, we actually know them better, so they can also anticipate much better. In that way, you can actually offer better services. And, uh, and that's why we call those primary relationships. On the back of all that knowledge and that build-up relationship, you can offer more business and you can develop your cross-buy. And we're talking about cross-buy rather than cross-sell in ING because we're a digital bank, right? right? We don't have people going out and trying to sell our customers something. It's the customer who is in touch with us and can react to some of the offers uh, or take initiatives themselves. Uh, so that's, that's the switch of the model. It's, it's really, it, we've really turned around the model from you know, savings in and, 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 and booking loans to a, a holistic client bank. Okay, now obviously if, 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 if interest rates are low and interest margins are tight, uh, there's an attraction in improving your fee income. Yes. Um, so tell us how much percentage of your earnings is fees and, and how you plan to get that up. Yeah, well here you see that uh, in the model that we've developed, uh, we basically uh, developed a model along um, a promise to our customers to always be transparent, uh, simple, easy uh, and empowering. In a model like that, it is very difficult. 
in our view, to charge fees if you're not adding value to the customer. So you can't just charge fees because you lack income. And that's, that's different from many of the other banks. Mm -hmm. So where we want to charge fees, it is for products that the client really wants. So now we have these primary relationships and we're building them up and we've grown in number of primary relationships by almost a million just last year. We're close to 10 million primary relationships now out of the 36 million customers that we have. Um, since you have that relationship, you can then also start to offer more services. For example, the investment services with low rates on the savings side, but being known for a fair bank, a transparent bank, we can offer simple investment products. We can offer simple insurance products, all digital though. And on the back of these products, you can actually generate fees because people and clients value that offer. And then you can increase your fee income. Okay, so now we've talked about uh, revenues. The other side of, of, of earnings is, is, is keeping costs under control. Yes. Your cost to income is about 53%. Yes. What's your sort of ambition in that area and how do you hope to achieve it? Well, the ambition in that area is to get it much closer to the 50%. Um, uh, over the last couple of years, we've made enormous improvements in our cost structure. We took about 1 billion of cost out, literally out. But on the other side, we got a lot of regulatory cost in return for it. So bank taxes, uh, deposit guarantee systems, contributions to the resolution funds, which is almost equal. It's like 850 million for us last year. All of that, cash out. Um, so all the savings that we've been able to generate through our digital model actually were taken up by, by these additional costs. But we continue to invest in digital. So you, will, you can expect our cost in many of the countries from an operating perspective, uh, from an efficiency perspective to go down. However, at the same time, we're growing. We're growing in the number of products, we're growing the number of clients. Uh, so um, the savings in efficiency on one side because of being digital uh, will be offset, uh, offset by investments in areas uh, to introduce new products and, and just real growth because we continue to grow. We still get 1,500 new customers a day in Germany, we get still get 600 new customers a day in Spain. Okay, so 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 when we translate that into the hard numbers, I mean, your return on equity is around sort of 10, 11 percent. Yep. You know, w again, what's the ambition for that moving ahead? Well, that's a, that's a, actually it's it's a difficult one. Um, our ambition, the way we set it out uh, three, four years ago, was anywhere between 10 to 13 percent. At that moment, we were we were still in restructuring from a bank insurance to a bank. Um, and that was quite an ambitious target, but we're hitting it, right? As you said, last year, it's been around the 11%. Looking forward, I think you can manage it uh, uh, at this level and from a return perspective, even with the low interest rates, um, because of the cost that you can attack through digitalization. However, the capital levels for European banks, for most of the banks, are still uncertain going forward uh, because of the discussions in Basel. And, and that could really influence uh, our capital levels and that could then trigger uh, uh, your return as well and, and uh, impact your return as well. And then we'll see. Now, you have said you'd like the analysts to look at you as a tech company mm -hmm. rather than a bank. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, presumably you'd get a bit of a higher rating if you did that. Uh, but do you think there's any real prospect of that? Well, we're working on it. Uh, we're trying to explain the story. Uh, what I see is that indeed analysts look at us as a bank. Uh, the way we want to portray ourselves is a tech company with a banking license, really. Um, and, and honestly, e even further, I think we should basically, uh, basically be uh, the largest bank without a balance sheet. I mean, if you, if you really take it far in, in, into the future. Um, now, going back to the specific question um, on, um, on the valuation here, every new client that we get is costing us in the first year. So if analysts continue to basically value us on a multiple basis, my net earnings are lower because I'm growing. So I don't get credit for my growth. Whereas, Whereas, a, tech my Whereas a tech company does. Exactly, and that's the case I'm making. Uh, every year we grow by 1.4 or 1.5 million new customers. And we can actually show that a new customer coming in over time generates value even in a digital model because we've turned around, as I said, from a savings model to a primary banking model. So there will be cross-buy uh, uh, coming in. There will be new products 
uh, sold to these customers as well. So the value of these customers is nowhere taken into account in our valuation. Ralph, I hope the analysts are listening. Thank you very much. You're welcome.